And we're back with more of the Popon film. So where were we? Uh, oh, here we are. Okay. Uh, the ice. We skate is getting pretty thin. The water's getting warm, so you might as well swim. World's on fire. How about yours? That's the way I like it, and I'll never get bored. Probably like an hour. Oh, Hey I'm now, you're a guy, so and you do dinner. things. We're gonna do that on our segment. Okay, that's fine. I was just, I was, I just wanted to get a song in in listeners' heads. Oh, so is what I was going for. Oh, so I skipped your part. I skipped, I skipped the part you're gonna talk about. Um, hey, Bunny, guess what? Hi. What? With? No, you gotta guess. Okay, let's put your pants on, okay? Maybe put your hair up. Yeah. You gotta Sat actually get. Satanic <laughs> checkout clerks. No, you are wrong. Yeah. Well then, boys and girls and gender gobots. I was gonna use Transformers, but I wanted a more archaic reference. Yeah. It's once again, it's time once again. To get your trapper keepers and your backpacks. What are you doing? Are you two strapping? I gotta be seen with you. You gotta one strap it. Seriously, I'd have no straps if that would even be possible. Because it's homework time once again here on the old Pope on Film podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention please. Detach from your fandoms for a few measly minutes and kindly pay attention. Each week, the Pope on Film podcast assigns homework in the hopes of bettering its listeners, nay, the entire human race. Seriously? Like, seriously? Nothing? Okay. What? Fine. Okay. No, 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 it's fine. And this week, we're covering ourselves in a thin layer of a mucus-like substance known as Creepo. Because no matter how... Damn it, Bunny! What? Damn it! I am so pissed off at you right now, Bunny. <laughs> okay. I am so pissed off, Bunny. You don't even care about me. Do you even care about our relationship, Bunny? Okay. Or am I the only one here? Am I the only one around here who cares? Who even cares about maintaining our goddamn relationship, Bunny? Because what this whole homework on? introduction, it's from 36 episodes ago. Okay. Episode 132, the movie was The Room and the homework was that doll collecting documentary. And you don't even care! <laughs> that I got an old introduction and dusted it off and did it word for word, <laughs> line for line. You don't even care. You don't even care. This hurts me to the very core, Bunford. Why Hell, are you doing I, the same intro as a doll intro? Because it was a test and you failed, sir. <laughs> I bet you didn't even... Yeah, and you know what? We've been recording this podcast for what? Like like an hour? Hour yeah. hour, hour, and ten minutes? You haven't even mentioned my haircut. No. You got a haircut? No, but he doesn't know that. Benny, Benjamin, Bunny, Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin. 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 Okay, well... I was wondering. Thankfully, I... I'm a professional, Bunny. Yes. So I'm yes, going to press are. ahead, Bunny, with this episode of the Pope on Film podcast, but you're not out of the woods. You got me? I got you. You're not out of the woods. You are into the woods. You are so into the woods that James Corden is singing about being a baker. <laughs> the dead wife. That's how into the woods you are right now. Yeah, that was him. That was him in the movie. Yeah, it's weird. Well, this week, we will be using the Bible to gouge our eyes out because this week we are watching an old school Christian children's video. It's on YouTube, and if you're playing along at home, the video is entitled Salty Volume 1, and that's P-S-A-L-T-Y, Salty Volume 1, and wow, 
Just wow. It, this. It was not nearly as offensive as Bible Man. Yeah, this is some seriously powerful stuff. I put on Salty, and five seconds later, Emerald had converted to Christianity. It was amazing. It was amazing. It's weird because she's there in like her leather tight pants and like a tiny little crop top, you know. And, and then I put on Salty, and I turned, and she's wearing a cardigan sweater, reading the Bible. <laughs> and slaps talking about how great Jesus's love is. It was amazing. That's how powerful this is. Yeah. Where's my purse? <laughs> Couldn't believe it. The moment I saw that yeah. creepy blue psalm sing, I instantly oh, became Christian and uh, opened a cake shop <laughs> and refused to bake cakes for evil gay people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you do. Like every good Christian should. Refuse service yeah. to the gays. The thing that gets me about the whole Christian bakery case thing, it has nothing to do with religion or religious persecution or my religious convictions. The thing that gets me about this is that this case, this case the whole uh, refusing to bake a cake for a gay wedding, this case is at the Supreme Court. And the gay couple's argument is, hey, we're being discriminated against. So that's their case. But the cake decorator's case is wild as hell. Yeah. Yeah. The cake decorators say, well, I'm an artist. Okay. So by being forced to bake a cake for this gay couple, that's infringing on my artistic expression. Okay. And that's some real, that's a real shaky fucking argument. That you know? is a real shaky argument because I, I'm buying a cake. I'm not buying it for your artistic expression. I'm buying what I tell you to make. So, so it really, what this entire case is about is about art. Okay. Because, like, I was reading some of the transcripts from the first day of the Supreme Court case, and the the judge for the for the bakery is talking about how this is an infringement on their freedom of expression and and their artistic freedom. So then, one of the Supreme Court justices said, "Okay, so what you're saying is the person who made the invitations." If they were Christian, they could also say, hey, I'm not making an invitation for you. That goes against my artistic expression. And then the, the lawyer said, well, no, because they're not an artist. Mm -hmm. But so so then who gets to decide what's well, art then is well, basically what, what this is about. No, I, I, I find it as is what difference does it fucking make if you are hired? It's not about your artistic expression anymore. You are getting money. Yeah. So if you get, do you think all these people making commercials, they, that that's actually their artistic expression? It's ridiculous. No, they're hired and they're making <clears throat> the commercial that their client wants. Yeah. How long do you and think you would be working in an artistic endeavor, in an artistic industry, if you're bitching about your artistic expression, you're not yeah, lasting very long yeah, at that's all. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. But now, also, now, if you made a cake that is your artistic expression, and you're going to put it in your in the like the front case where everybody mm -hmm. can see and they'll look and they'll go, ooh, wow, this person's really good. That's a different matter. If 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 I make a if I have a cake shop, okay, and yeah. I make a cake with a lot of big tits and dicks, and I put it into into my display case because it's a display showing my artistic my artistic expression. 
that's a different matter. You can't really come into my store and, and demand I take that cake out. Yeah. There you would have a case. And also, I'd hate to say this, but I don't think a cake is art. Anything could be art. I can I could go even, with the idea that a cake is art, but their argument it, is still ridiculous. Yeah, the argument is ridiculous. It, even if a cake is art, what does that mean? Does that mean that Subway restaurants can refuse to serve gay people too? Because they're sandwich artists. Yeah. What I really should how, have done how is... Does, how does their gayness inhibit your artistic creativity for a fucking yeah. wedding cake? Yeah. <clears throat> I almost choked on popcorn. If anything, if you are actually an artist, then this is a new and bold and interesting challenge. Yeah. This will this will now stretch my artistic vision to be more inclusive. What I what I should have done is when I worked at the bookstore, you know, I was so good at my job mm -hmm. that my customer service really was an art form. That's how good I was at helping customers. So I should have just refused people because, uh, excuse me, uh, this, you, you see me here? I'm art. Yeah. So I can't help you find your freaking Bill O'Reilly book. Because <laughs> this is artistic expression. Yeah. Anyway, salty. Pasalty. Bunny, Pisalty. on a scale from 8 to 10, how moved were you by the songs of praise and worship on this video? On a scale from 9 to 10, how blown away were you? I got to go 9.2. Yeah. That's how amazing it was. You know, what's funny is that I watched it on YouTube and, and, and the show is Salty's songs for little praisers, but I watched it with the captioning on, on TV, they have closed captioning, which means this has been written beforehand. And yeah. this is, this is what this company has written and it is attached to this show. Um, and I always have captioning on. But on YouTube, YouTube has the, well, we have a bot that will approximate what it thinks it hears on the video. Oh, that must have been funny. Yeah, so according to YouTube's caption bot, the show is actually called Salty's Songs for Little Frasers. <laughs> oh, so that's why the singing Bible kept saying... I love Jesus and toss salads and scrambled eggs. <laughs> They're coming again. Worst theme song ever. Yeah. Fuck the goddamn Frasier theme song. <laughs> I liked Frasier, but it, it's just the... It, oh, fuck that song. I hated that song so much. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. <laughs> so let's do some let's do some salty stats. Okay. Salty the singing songbook was the brainchild of the husband and wife team of Dick and Evelyn Florn. All right. Oh wait, I'm sorry. That was the husband and wife team who dominated the putt putt the sport of putt putt golf in the 1970s. Yes. The weird yeah. thing is is that that's an actual thing. I'm not just making up something. Dick and Evelyn Florin were, did dominate the putt-putt circuit in the 1970s. That's not just something I made up. That's some true facts. Learn your putt-putt history. Well, wasn't, wasn't that on cheap seats? Yes, it was. Yes. So, Salty the Singing Songbook is the brainchild of the husband and wife team of Debbie Kerner and Ernie Retino personally 
I've never trusted anyone named Ernie. No. You know? It's like not even a real name. Yeah. Ernie is the name of some guy who lives in Brooklyn and you need something. Well, I Ernie knows a guy. Yeah. That's that's who Ernie is. Shifty. I've never met a non-shifty Ernie. Uh, I think I got to agree. Ernie's another. I had a very, I had a very straight-laced uncle named Ernie. Yeah. And the whole and and he was a veteran, and he 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 went to Vietnam, and he served his country, and he did a number of tours, and he got medals, and he was labeled a hero, and yet still, I'm giving him like a side eye, like yeah. I know that you're like a decorated hero, but also you're named Ernie, so I got my eye on you. Yeah. Uncle Ernie. And, um. Well, and particularly, Uncle Ernie used to be a euphemism for a child molester. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. I am a big fan of Tommy. Yeah. The musical Tommy. So I am aware of that. Usually, I skip that song. Yeah. Fucking fiddle about. So, so hey, good news. My uncle Ernie uh, snapped and went nuts and uh, ended up in jail for a lot of really bad things and then died. Ah. Oh. And uh, that's sad, but also, I was kind of right. <laughs> that's what you get when a guy's named Ernie. Yeah. Ernie was a solo Christian musician in the late 1960s. Then he met his wife at church in the mid 70s, and they started recording together. Um, once they were married, they they started cranking out the songs. She recorded some albums. He did a ton of them. Then they recorded a shit ton of songs together. Then in the in the 1980s, this team created Salty. The uh, Video, songbook videos of praise and worship for little kids and it was huge this was a huge hit amongst Christian families these white bread motherfuckers would hop in their minivan in their Sunday best in 1987 on their way to Sears or Montgomery Ward and they were bumping some salty tunes bitches <laughs> yes fella huh? I don't know um, on the couch. They're right, literally oh, right there on the couch. They're literally right there. Blind. Interesting fact on the website salty.com in the biography section, the wife, uh, Debbie Kerner, actually, actually, literally, legitimately said this quote. <clears throat> I'm married to a man who wears blue tights and sometimes comes to bed with blue makeup in his ears. Okay. So, I take comfort in that because it's nice to know that there are Christian furries. Yes. You know? A little Christian kink. You know, as long as they're upfront about it. Yeah. It's, in it's funny because Christians, Christians are like, oh, I, I'm against homosexuality. <laughs> And I am against sexual kinks and perversity and homosexuality. And I'm against, I'm against these furries. Is that what they call them? I saw something on 60 Minutes. Furries, I am against that. Now, if you will excuse me, I'm going to dress as a giant singing Bible to the kids. <laughs> then maybe afterwards, honey, we can get biblical. <laughs> So Christian furries exist, and, and I'm really excited about that. 